with another win behind Carlos Rodon. The San Francisco Giants improved to 120 and 60 since the start of the 2021 season. It's a 180 game span and they've won twice as many games as they've lost. So we'll talk about the Giants success, the lack of respect they continue to get and Carlos Rodon just continuing to be dominant next. You are Locked On Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Giants, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspik, and on the show, we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data-driven and rational, but also simple, passionate, and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites, Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015, and I'm a lifelong fan. Thank you for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts. And coming up on today's show, another day, another win. And I want to point out something that Alex Pavlovich pointed out that I read this morning. This is last night was the Giants' third consecutive game in a different city in a different time zone. So they played the game in Washington, D.C., and then they went to another time zone, central time zone to Milwaukee, and they then came all the way home to the West and played the A's. They won all three games. So it's just a truly incredible kind of gritty week it's been for the San Francisco Giants and really the start of the season. They improved to what is even their record? 13 and 5. So like I said, when you combine that with 2021, they're 120 and 60 over their last 180 games. So incredible achievement. We'll talk about how they continue to get no respect and we'll look at some of what we were talking about around this time last year, it's actually pretty funny to look at. But I think Carlos Rodon needs to be talked about first as he went out there and just had another excellent game for the Giants. He's done nothing but go out there and have excellent games each and every time out. Sometimes, I mean, the only real enemy is himself sometimes on the mound, whether he can put guys away or throw quite enough strikes. I mean, it's we're nitpicking if we're trying to find any fault with his game. Last night, he went six innings. He had nine strikeouts. He walked two. He allowed one run, and he allowed three hits. So in his four giant starts, he has struck out eight or more every time. He has allowed no more than three hits every time, and he's allowed no more than one run every time. And according to Stats by Stats, the only other pitcher in the modern era to do that in four straight starts at any point in a single season was Jacob deGrom in 2021. Wow. I mean, it's not like, okay, San Francisco Giants players to do that in their four, first four starts of the season or their first four starts with the team. It's any pitcher to ever do that in four consecutive starts at any point in the modern era. And honestly, off the top of my head, I don't remember exactly what the when the modern era started, but it wasn't yesterday, right? It wasn't last year. This has been a, we're talking about a, a big period of time here, and Rodon is dominant to a degree that almost nobody has been dominant, except maybe Jacob Degrom, who at his peak is like clearly the best pitcher in baseball right now. But Pavlovich also pointed out, and he's correct, that it's a bit of a cautionary tale with Degrom because. He was so great, but then he's been hurt. And Rodon has a history of being injured a lot as well. And even last year, when he was dominant like this for the early part of the season, his velocity completely tanked and the performance struggled and he wasn't able to go deep in games as the season went on. But he did, importantly, come back healthy in the postseason and was throwing 99. So the Giants are going to be careful with him. They're going to monitor him very closely. They've got a lot... They've got a lot invested in Carlos Rodon, but simply said, he's just been fantastic, and he absolutely carried them to victory over the A's last night. Also, offensively, they got a three-run homer from Wilmer Flores, and they got a three-run homer later in the game by Austin Slater to right field against a right-handed pitcher. So pretty impressive swings of the bats by both, and the Giants cruised to victory. So 
I want to shift our attention to kind of talking about how the Giants continue to get no respect. This is something I was paying attention to yesterday when the Bet Online World Series odds came out and the Mets had moved all the way up to second in Major League Baseball in terms of odds to win the World Series. And it just reminded me of how the Giants just continue to get no respect. Even last year, when they won 107 games, all along the way, the conversation was about when will they stop winning? When will they come crashing down to earth? How are they doing this? Do we even believe that they're good, you know, on their way to a 107-win season? And this year, the Mets, if you if you follow like MLB on Twitter, for example, the MLB actual kind of league Twitter handle, they're constantly talking about the Mets. Where you know, and in the meantime, the Giants are only half a game behind the Mets in terms of the standings. Giants have the second best record in baseball, half a game behind the Mets, who are playing right now and losing. So uh, Giants could, if with a win and a Mets loss, become the number one team in baseball. And we'll see if MLB social media is as fanatical about the Giants as they are about the Mets right now. But that's OK. The Giants always fly under the radar. And I pulled up this tweet from myself, from the Lockdown Giants account last year. What was the date on this? April 26, 2021. And it was the MLB.com power rankings. So coming up next, I'm going to tell you what these rankings were and what I had to say about them and what ended up being the case with all of the teams I mentioned in this tweet. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about some other Carlos Rodon numbers, some COVID news for the Giants, another player going down and a trade for the Giants. So a lot to get into next. Our next partner has a product that I use literally every day. I started taking AG1 because I wanted to see what all the hype was about. So what is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. All of the things. It's importantly to me, lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, and it costs less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health and it's cheaper than your cold brew or Nespresso habit. Certainly that is the case. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No, no, no need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash MLB network. Again, athleticgreens.com slash MLB network to take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, as promised, we've got a lot more to get to. Giants with another win yesterday. It's starting to feel like 2021 all over again. Don't want to get too ahead of ourselves. They could rattle off a bunch of losses in a row. It's still early in the season. We don't know ultimately what's going to happen. But when you have a 107-win season that defied what experts thought they were going to do. And then coming into this year, same deal. People are skeptical about them again. And then they get off to a 13 and five start. It's hard not to get a little bit excited, but we're going to try to stay cool, calm and collected about it to the best of our ability. Uh, Thanks again for making Locked on Giants your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked on Now podcast recaps of MLB games with analysis from our local experts, taking fans through the season like no other network, free and available wherever you get podcasts. So yeah, I mean, after every game, the Lockdown hosts, we put out a little clip with the key takeaway from that day's game, whatever it is. Yesterday for me, it was the Giants being 120 and 60 in their last 180 and Carlos Rodon continuing to look like a Cy Young candidate. And then you can see these for every single team in the Locked On Now podcast or listen to it. So anyway, check that out. There's more I want to get into. Kevin Gosman also is pitching great. It's pretty crazy that when you look at the Fangraphs wins above replacement leaders, 
in Major League Baseball. Number one is Kevin Gosman, and number two is Carlos Rodon. How crazy is that, right? Because, I mean, the Giants kind of found both of these guys. And these Kevin Gosman was not Kevin Gosman before the Giants got their hands on him. And so I'm extremely happy for Kevin Gosman. I like him a lot as a person. He's just a cool, down-to-earth guy. And he goes to the Blue Jays, gets this big deal, and it's been great. It, he has like 31 strikeouts and zero walks so far for the Blue Jays. Pitched great yesterday. And Carlos Rodon, meanwhile, I mean, they replaced Gosman with Rodon, and he's put up numbers, I would argue, that are even better than Kevin Gosman. Carlos Rodon leads the major leagues in strikeout rate by a pretty wide margin. He's at, I think, like 43 or 44% which is just nuts. The league average is around 22%. So he's striking out like more than two times the league average. And he's also striking out nearly half of the batters that come to the plate. That is why something like strikeout percentage is just the best way to look at it. Instead of just looking at strikeout totals or strikeouts per nine, strikeout percentage is like every batter who steps to the plate counts and we're just saying what percentage of batters who come up strike out and for Rodon it's like 44 percent which is just ridiculous the elite relievers in the game are up around that level so uh, you know in short spurts relievers tend to have higher strikeout rates because they can max effort it for an inning whereas starting pitchers it tends to come down a little bit but not for Rodon and this is Somewhat what he was able to do last year. And it's like when we look at why what, why do we consider what he did last year a breakout? How did it indicate to us that he had become a different pitcher? Look no further than the strikeout rate. And so it's exciting. He continues to dominate with the fastball. It's just hard for opponents to hit it even when they know it's coming. It was the best pitch in baseball per baseball savant's run value metric last season. And it's looking like that again. So, you know, he's obviously been a great addition. And when I point out the uh, Kevin Gosman thing, I don't think the 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 way I would I wouldn't look at it like, oh, the Giants made a mistake not bringing back Kevin Gosman in addition to signing Carlos Rodon. I think it's e- uh, too early to judge a five year deal three weeks into year one of that of that deal. So I keep talking about Patrick Corbin because we just saw him, but. The Nationals gave him a six-year deal. He was great in year one, and the Nationals won the World Series, but it's been a disaster ever since. And so it's too early to judge a five-year deal. And Kevin Gosman may be great for the first couple of years, and maybe the Giants would have loved to have him for a couple of years. But they're worried about year three, four, and five, probably. So we can't really judge that deal until it plays out. And for Rodon, he gets the exact same average annual value at 22 million but it's over two years with an opt-out he can opt out after this year if he reaches at least 110 innings and uh for kevin gosman it's the same aav at 22 million but it's over five guaranteed years and that's a long time like we did this a lot in the offseason looking back at pitchers from five years ago who were considered the top pitchers in the free agent class of five years ago, you start to question your own age. Like when you look at some of these names, you can't believe that these guys were considered the best pitchers in baseball just five years ago. I mean, look at Johnny Cueto and Jeff Samarja as a couple of other examples. At the time, they were considered among the best pitchers, but very quickly after that, they completely fell off the face of the earth and were, you know, Cueto, both of them, Samarja, I don't know if he officially retired, but once he left the Giants, he never found another team. And Cueto was unsigned until very late. I think the season had already started and the White Sox had an injury and that was the only kind of reason that they signed him. So anyway, a lot can change in five years. So let's just, I'm happy for Kevin Gosman, but I think the Giants are right to be hesitant to give out long-term deals for pitchers. And the point is that they found just as good of production for a player that they only had to commit to for a shorter term, which has a lot less risk but the same production right now so that's my point so anyway i want to get to these tweets from last year i just found them kind of humorous so last year the mlb power rankings came out on april 26th or 25th and 
on the Locked On Giants account, I tweeted about it because the Giants were off to a great start, and there were some other teams off to a good start that for some inexplicable reason, these other teams that had like comparably good starts were ranked way higher than the Giants. For example, the Kansas City Royals. This one gets under my skin. For some reason, two off seasons ago, people were like doing victory laps about the Kansas City Royals and saying they had a great off season. They're really trying. They're uh, they're doing what other teams really should be doing. They signed like Mike Miner and traded for Andrew Benintendi and signed Michael A. Taylor. Like the moves that they made were not that exciting or inspiring at all. They made a couple of major league signings and trades that didn't really seem to move the needle much, and they got off to a pretty good start. In fact, through these games that I'm talking about here, uh, they were 13-7 and seven through 20 games, and the Giants were 14-8. and eight. They had played, I guess, two more games. But the Giants at 14-8 and eight were ranked 16th in the power rankings last year at the end of April, and the Royals were ranked 7th. I just couldn't understand that. In what universe is a slightly higher winning percentage from the Royals worth ranking them 7th in the power rankings and the Giants slightly worse being all the way down at 16th. And what I said at the time was, zero respect as usual. SF Giants have the second best record in the NL, ranked 16th. Royals are comparably surprising slash competitive, ranked 7th. Twins are off to a horrible start, ranked 13th. Brewers 5th, A's 2nd. Literally makes no sense. And guess what? I was right. Sorry, I was right. The Giants, as I point out here in this tweet from yesterday, their success is always met with skepticism and doubt. Always, right? Anytime the Giants are good, it's skepticism and doubt. And other teams, last year it was the Royals, this year it's the Mets. I get it. The Mets had a very good offseason. I, I think they're a good team. I They added talent at the top, but importantly for me, they also added really good depth, I thought, with Canna and Eduardo Escobar. Starling Marte, they just really lengthened out that lineup and that roster, and I liked that. And so I liked the Mets. No disrespect from me. I would rank the Mets up there too. But whenever another team has like a breakout success, there's so many other teams that immediately it gets bought into by by the national media and MLB.com. They just like buy in to the success. And for the Giants, it's always skepticism and doubt. And we pointed this out in April of last year, and it was correct. The Royals, by the way, ended up 74 and 88 last year, which isn't surprising. Like, that's what I would have thought they would be going into the year, and that's what they were. And the Giants were 107 and 55. So, I don't know. Is it a fluke? Maybe. Was it a fluke last year and a fluke to start this year? Maybe. But, you know, a lot of people don't care. It just gets under my skin a little bit. So coming up next, we're going to talk about the Giants making a trade. And also, uh, they've got some injury updates in the COVID IL. Another player has COVID. Who is it? Who replaces them? And then what are they going to do from a pitching perspective tonight when, you know, it should have been either Discofani or Cobb, but neither is available. So what is the pitching plan for tonight? Stay tuned for that. But first, this is the time of year I've pretty much given up on all of my New Year's resolutions, but not this year. I'm sticking to my resolution to eat right thanks to Built Bar. It almost feels like it's not really a resolution because I actually enjoy eating them. Have you tried the Puffs? If you haven't, you're missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting bars. Puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, they're marshmallowy, they're not just a protein bar, they're a treat. And they're covered in 100% real chocolate. How can you possibly go wrong with that? Go to Built.com, scroll down to their macros chart, and you'll be blown away. High protein, low calorie, high fiber, low carb. Most Built Bars contain 130 calories, just 4 grams of sugar, and 17 grams of protein. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. All right, as promised, we're going to talk about, we're going to tie some loose ends here. Giants making a trade. They've also got another COVID case, and they have a 
starting pitching plan that we weren't sure of going into the day. So the COVID case is Zach Littell. So this is the second Giants positive test for COVID-19 in the last few days. Mike Yastrzemski, a few days prior, he has to unfortunately continue to quarantine in Washington, D.C. for at least, I want to say at least 10 days. But actually, if you return two negative PCR tests before that, then you're cleared to come back as well. But Zach Littell has symptoms. Mike Yastrzemski had symptoms. And Littell gets replaced on the roster with Kervin Castro. So the Giants, Gabe Kapler said that both players gave him permission to say both players were vaccinated and boosted, just as a piece of information there for Yastrzemski and Littell. And then the pitching plan, it's going to be Sam Long starting this game. Uh, so he started on Friday. He started on Monday. And he's going to start on Wednesday. So an opener strategy, right? Well, thankfully, I think we're normalizing this a little bit. It doesn't feel all that weird anymore when you just have the bullpen pitch a game, right? They're all just pitchers out there. So to me, it's we kind of make too big of a deal about it. It's a... Uh, and they've been good, right? In their bullpen game on Friday against the Nationals, they shut them out or allowed one run. It was a good, it was a well pitched game. On Monday against the Brewers, they allowed two runs in the whole game. And coming up today, Sam Long is going to make the start. He has been very good. He's a lefty, and he's thrown hard, and he's got a good breaking ball. So, and he's got a good changeup. I've liked what I've seen a lot from Sam Long, and we're likely to see Jacob Junis in long relief, just like we saw on Friday and Junis was spectacular on Friday. So uh, even though it's a bullpen game, I like the Giants chances and I like that I like their the way that their pitching looks going into this game. It's a lot better. It's easy to take for granted what the Giants have been able to do. But like I'm constantly thinking back to the lean years when you would just have kind of random guys who weren't very good pitching a lot of innings and getting lit up kind of on a consistent basis. Well, that's not really the case anymore. Every single guy who comes in out of the bullpen is good. Every single guy who's coming up from the minor leagues has something to offer, whether it's Sam Long or Jacob Junis or whoever. They don't just let, they're not just complacent with guys who are not performing. And it's gotten to the point where just everybody is performing. And so let's not take that for granted. It's it's not the case for every team. Plenty of teams have guys who just are on their roster. They get beat up like every time they go out there, and that's just the best that they can do. But for the Giants, I mean, this is kind of the back end of their pitching depth, and they've been very good. I mean, Junis was spectacular. Like I said, Sam Long has been very good and is super intriguing with his mid-plus 90s fastball and and good breaking ball and changeup. So I think that Pitching-wise, they're in a pretty good position to win this game against the Oakland A's. The A's have a right-handed starter going. I don't have it queued up. I don't remember exactly who it is. It looks like Blackburn. Is that Paul Blackburn? Yeah, Paul Blackburn, right-handed pitcher, has had a solid season, but is another guy, I mean, 91 strikeouts career in 153 innings, similar to last night, just someone who's going to induce a lot of contact, and the Giants should, in theory, be able to, to win a game. Never guaranteed, but should have a pretty good shot. So lastly, the trade that the Giants made, they acquired infielder Kevin Podlo from the Mariners for cash considerations. Podlo has been, had been DFA'd by the Mariners last week. And so, you know, they were able to trade him to the Giants for cash. And he is a right-handed, probably platoon guy. So something that, you know, we talk about maybe their need for another right-handed bat. Well, he joins the 40-man roster, and according to fan graphs a few years ago, a couple years ago, they kind of comped him to like a Yandi Diaz type of player on the Tampa Bay Rays, someone who plays corners, whether it's third, first, maybe in the outfield. I don't know if Padlo can play the outfield, but uh, and hit left-handed pitching pretty well. He has a lot of power, and he gets on base via the walk, pretty good eye. So typical kind of Giants player. He gets added to the 40-man roster, and we may see him at some point, so... Just wanted to point that out. Anyway, coming up tomorrow, we'll have the latest from today. And then the Giants will finally have an off day at home. And we'll do a mailbag later in the week as well. So thanks again for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. Now make your second listen Locked on MLB. Paul Francis Sullivan, please call him Sully, brings you his unique perspective on the majors past and present. 
It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. Once again, my name is Ben Kaspik. Check me out on Twitter at Ben Kaspik, K-A-S-P-I-C-K. If you like this show, rate it, leave it a review, whatever you can do. It, it helps me out a lot. So thank you so much in advance. And thank you to everyone who's done so already. I can't wait to be with you again tomorrow. Thanks again for listening today. Stay locked on Giants.